Hey guys and welcome back. We're going to cover a few questions today off the mathematical knowledge portion of the ASVAB. Now remember, the mathematical knowledge portion is not so much word problems as it is straight mathematical content. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dive right in. We're starting off a new test here, mathematics knowledge for part five of the ASVAB. So looking at question number one here, it looks pretty basic and straightforward, but you do need to know your exponent rules. So if you did not know, if you have the same base, in this case, our base is X, then when you multiply the two together, you can actually add the exponents. That is called your product rule. There's also another one called your quotient rule that says that if you have the same base with different exponents or the same exponents being divided, you can subtract those, kind of the opposite of the product rule. That's called the quotient rule. So these exponent rules make these questions extremely easy. In this case, we're just going to add our two exponents together, giving us a total of x to the sixth power, doing the 4 plus 2. And that means our final answer here is a. We're going to go through this entire test, so keep checking out each day, and we'll see what our next question is going to be. So this question number two says, if a rectangle has a perimeter of 36 feet and it's four feet wide, what's its area? So let's take a look here. We have a rectangle here, and it says that it is four feet wide so we're looking at like four feet here which means that this guy's going to be four as well all right now it does tell us it has a perimeter of 36 now what is perimeter parameter is when you take all four sides and add them together well we don't know what that is yet but we do know that we have eight so far so 36 minus eight will tell us how much we have left to go so if i do 36 minus eight that's going to end up giving me 28 now, 28 is going to be this side and this side. So if I split that 28 in half to get the top and bottom here, that's going to give me 14 and 14. So our last step here is to find the area. How do you find area? You do length times width. So now that we know it's 4 and 14, we have to just multiply those together to get our final answer. So if I do 4 times 14, let's just do this one right here. 4 times 4 is 16. Carry the 1. 4 times 1 is 4. Plus 1 is 5. That gives us 56. So that means our answer here should be area is 56 square feet, answer A. So questions like this guy should be super easy on your ASVAB. Pretty straightforward. It says the cube root of 64 is blank. So what does cube root mean? It means essentially what number raised to the third power or cubed is equal to 64. Now, there's no great way to just do this because there's no calculator for this one, so you can't really just like cube root it, blah, 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 blah. So what do you do? Well, in this case, they give you the answers, and you can see none of them are decimals. So what times itself three times is going to give you 64? Well, let's just go through the options. We'll start with the smallest. Two times two is four times another two is eight. So that guy's out. Um, looking at three, three times three is nine times another three is 27. So that one's out. Uh, we'll go to the four. Four times four is 16 times another four is going to give me 64. So that's going to be our answer right there is going to be D. So in this case, it was probably quicker to just check your options and see which one ended up giving you the answer. So for number four in the ASVAB here, we have to talk about moving something into scientific notation. And when we're talking scientific notation, there's another word that usually goes with it called significant figures, which is essentially how many numbers you include uh, when you're trying to abbreviate a large number like this or usually much even larger than this guy. So let's talk about how scientific notation works. First off, you want one number and then the decimal point. Okay, then you include some numbers after sometimes based off of how many sig figs you want, those significant figures. So in this case, the first key is moving the decimal to where you will have one number before that decimal point. So right now the decimal point's here, right? So we're going to see how many times we move it to only have one number in front of it. We're going to move it one, two, three, four, Five, and it would go right here. So this three is the one number we have in front of this decimal point, and we moved it five times. Now let's see what we mean or how we're going to use that five times. So we end up multiplying this by 10 because in order to get from this number right here back to this number, you multiply it by 10 
the number of times we moved that decimal because that's how you move it back. So in this case, we moved it five times. Now notice we're gonna include these other numbers here, the one, four, those are the sig figs because they're non-zero numbers after that decimal point. And we want usually two of those there. Um, and if they're zero, zero, then you usually just don't include them. But regardless, we got 10. Now remember we moved it five times, so we're gonna put a five up here. Notice these two look like they're the same. I think this is a typo. This negative is supposed to be up here with the negative five. And for that reason, our answer is gonna be A. Let's talk about what we would do with that negative though. If that were a negative five, that actually means that you would be moving it in the opposite direction. So by multiplying by 10 to the negative five, we would move the decimal to the right five times. By moving it positive five, we move it to the left five times. So that's the one we want, option A. So number five says the reciprocal of one over six is what? So first off, let's talk, this is straight up a definition question. It would take you one second to do if you knew what reciprocal means. So let's talk about what reciprocal means. Reciprocal means like if you have any type of fraction, let's say three over five. The reciprocal is when you just flip that fraction upside down. So like this would become five over three. All right, so reciprocal is just that easy. It just means you flip it upside down. So in this case, we're dealing with a one over six. So if I flip that upside down, it's gonna become a six over one. Now remember, when anything is divided by one, you just get that number back, which means that this is actually just the number six. So if I look through my answers here, that means we're looking at answer C. Hey guys, that's all we're going to cover for today, but remember, you can always click on any of these videos over here to help you keep studying for your next attempt on the ASVAB.